When you picture a flamingo, one color instantly comes to mind, pink. Not just a soft blush, but sometimes a bold coral, a warm salmon, or even a deep reddish hue that almost looks painted on. Flamingos are so famously pink that it's hard to imagine them any other way. But here's the surprising truth. Flamingos are not born pink at all. So where does that color really come from? Is it genetics, sun exposure, some kind of natural dye hidden in their feathers? Today, we're breaking down the real reason flamingos are pink, how diet, biology, and evolution all work together to create one of the most iconic colors in the animal world right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with something that surprises most people. Flamingo chicks hatch with gray or white feathers. No pink, no coral, no dramatic color at all. At birth, they look more like fuzzy little pigeons than the elegant birds we see standing on one leg in shallow water. This alone tells us something important. Pink is not a default trait written permanently into their feathers. Instead, flamingos earn their color over time. And the key to that transformation lies in something very simple, what they eat. Flamingos spend most of their lives feeding in shallow lakes, lagoons, and wetlands. They filter water through their uniquely shaped beaks, trapping tiny organisms along the way. Their main food sources include algae, brine shrimp, small crustaceans, and microscopic plankton. These foods might look ordinary, but they contain powerful natural pigments called carotenoids. Carotenoids are the same pigments that make carrots orange, tomatoes red, and corn yellow. When flamingos consume these pigments regularly, their bodies begin to process them, and that's where the magic happens. Once carotenoids enter a flamingo's digestive system, they're broken down by enzymes in the liver. From there, the pigments are absorbed into the bloodstream and eventually deposited into the skin and feathers. Over time, as new feathers grow, they carry these pigments with them. The result? A gradual shift from gray or white to pale pink, then deeper pink, and sometimes even bright red depending on the species and the richness of their diet. In other words, flamingos aren't born colorful. They build their color meal by meal. The difference in flamingos' colors usually comes down to three main factors. One, diet quality. Flamingos with access to pigment-rich food sources develop stronger coloration. More carotenoids mean deeper pinks. 2. Species Differences There are six species of flamingos, and some are naturally more vibrant than others. For example, the American flamingo tends to be brighter than the greater flamingo. 3. Overall Health A healthy flamingo processes pigments more efficiently. Illness, stress, or malnutrition can cause feathers to fade or lose intensity. In a way, a flamingo's color acts like a visual health report. In the wild, color isn't just for show, it's communication. Brighter flamingos are often seen as healthier, better fed, and stronger potential mates. During mating season, vivid coloration can increase a flamingo's chances of attracting a partner. It's a natural signal that says, I'm thriving. This is why flamingos sometimes appear duller after breeding. Producing eggs and raising chicks demands a huge amount of energy, and pigments can be diverted away from feather maintenance during that time. Once they recover and resume feeding heavily, the pink returns. If flamingos need a special diet to stay pink, how do zoo flamingos keep their color? The answer is surprisingly straightforward. 
Zoos carefully supplement flamingo diets with carotenoid-rich foods, sometimes including special pellets, shrimp-based feed, and natural pigment additives. Without these, captive flamingos would gradually fade to a pale pink or even off-white. Early zoos didn't always understand this, and flamingos in captivity often lost their iconic color. Today, their pinkness is a sign of proper care and nutritional science. Flamingos aren't the only animals that consume carotenoids, so why don't more birds turn pink? The difference lies in how their bodies process pigments. Flamingos have evolved to store and display carotenoids efficiently in their feathers and skin. Other birds may metabolize the same pigments differently, using them for immune support, vision, or internal functions instead of visible coloration. So flamingos aren't just eating colorful food. They're uniquely built to show it. A flamingo's beak plays a huge role in its diet and ultimately its color. Their beaks are designed for filter feeding. When a flamingo lowers its head upside down into the water, its tongue pumps rapidly, pushing water through fine structures that trap tiny organisms. This specialized feeding method allows flamingos to consume massive quantities of algae and small crustaceans efficiently ensuring a steady intake of carotenoids, no filter feeding, no pigments, no pigments, no pink. If a flamingo's diet suddenly lacks carotenoids, the change isn't immediate, but it is noticeable over time. As old feathers molt and new ones grow without pigment, the bird's color gradually fades. The flamingo doesn't lose pink feathers, it simply stops replacing them with pink ones. This slow shift is another reminder that pink isn't permanent, it's maintained. Interestingly, flamingos don't just store pigments in their feathers. Their legs, skin, and even parts of their beaks can show pink coloration. That's because carotenoids circulate throughout the body before settling into growing tissues. Feathers are the most dramatic display, but they're not the only place the color appears. It's a full body effect, not just a cosmetic one. So why are flamingos pink? Because their bodies turn the pigments from algae and crustaceans into living color because evolution rewarded those who could display health through brightness, and because nature often paints its most iconic designs using the simplest ingredients. Flamingos aren't pink by accident. They're pink by lifestyle. And once you know that, it's hard not to appreciate them even more. Standing tall, balanced on one leg, quietly wearing the colors of everything they've eaten along the way. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.